Hi, book two. Welcome to Jackie's Leonard Corner. I am Jackie. And, okay, so I already kind of updated you guys a little bit when I did my digital haul. But I didn't, I didn't mostly focus on showing you the books I recently purchased. Um, so I thought I would go ahead and update you again on while my reading is going. And I do have some books to show you that I recently purchased because we have a Target now in our community, in our town. So my mom and I did Target trip and to check it out and stuff. And of course, I lack the self-control on to buy a couple books. Um, I mean, although now if I bought another one, I could have got, if I bought a third, I could get the third for free. And there, like there was a deal on that, but I am not doing that. I figured because I don't need to do that. I don't need to buy a third book. Um, but anyway, so currently I am almost through with the, with A Blood and Fire by Ryan Callhill. Um, it, I am nervous though that it's getting to the point where the character are three, the, the three boys are going to get separated and something, some people are going to, other characters are going to come between them. And there's going to be tension and people trying to manipulate them. I can say that, I feel like that's coming. Like maybe not in this book, but maybe in book two, like maybe the seeds are being planted in this first book. Um, and, but not gonna happen until, like, until, um, probably maybe book two. But, anyway, I'm also working my way through The Woman in White. I am almost done with it. Um, we still haven't figured out the mystery, but, like, there's a, um, the mystery of our Sir Percival Glyde and what his deal is and what secret he's worried that his, uh, that Laura might know about him. He's very nervous about that and paranoid about that. So we haven't figured out, but we're piecing it together. It's getting, you know, it's getting, we're getting a little bit of information about Sir Percival's background and what his deal is. And maybe we're going to figure out what his secret is. Um, and once again, we and we are still continuing multiple perspectives. Like mostly it was Laura's sister Marion's perspective. But now we're getting some other characters. Which yeah, it's kinda um which is kinda nice because we have the whole the whole picture through multiple everybody's story and you know, there's a little bit and you know like you get the whole picture because you get different people telling the story. Like the way this book is written. Um I mean, it's still written like a novel, but it's, I feel like we're getting transcripts, but in a way, like, it's like we're getting transcripts of other people's perspectives on the situation and what happened, what they saw, um, which adds to the mystery because, you know, we don't know, like, these people don't know everything. Not everyone knows everything. There's, people are only getting parts. They're only seeing what they, you know, what is made obvious to them. Looking, which, by the way, looking at this cover, this does not fit the story. This this is a weird cover. Like, I guess you could think you this, the shadowy figure could be one of the characters, but the setting does not make any sense. So I don't know where they came up with some like some of these old these classics, the covers that they have on the book. Like, what does that have to do with the story? Like, at least modern books, the there's some. The covers most time have to do with the story. They fit the story somehow, but covers of older or more literature just don't. It's like they're just picking what looks pretty. Which, yeah, covers, there is this aesthetic to them and everything, but like, even if it's a, you know, about looks, often, like, at least the looks fit the story, fit the plot. This does not make any sense to the plot. Um,. But I don't know. I mean, and some books I've noticed that they often like use the pa same painting. I swear, there have been times where they use the same painting cover for multiple books, which I found really funny. Um, so if I had to compare this book to anything, it would probably be The Mysteries of Udolpho. It has a similar type story where, you know, a female marries a man that's it turns out to be cruel and abusive and she and her, her female relative are trapped in the house 
Um, but our narrator is more of a fighter and more active participant in fighting back than the narrator of, of Mr. Zadolfo, I think. And this is, of course, less melodramatic, but it was also written in the Victorian period, so, you know, there's still melodrama, I think, but not as bad as, like, I think it, Mysteries of Udolfo would be Regency era. Um, but yeah, I, I like, I like the narrator better in this one than in the other, than Mysteries of Udolfo. And they, um, there are a lot of interest. I'm more interested in the characters in this one than that one. Like, there's a lot more interesting characters. Um, and I guess Count Fosco to me is worse than Sir Percival. Like he's so unpredictable. Like you don't know if he's like, gonna charm you or if he's gonna kill you. Um, but yeah, so at least I'm in the 500s mark now, which I really appreciate that. I mean, now to be fair, a lot of this book is also like appendices and a list listing other books that are in this edition, the classics that have been published in this kind of edition. The Oxford World Classics, um, and then there's like appendices and all that, so it's a little bit less than what than than this that I have left. But anyway, it's getting really like I'm definitely want to know what's gonna happen. Like I definitely want to know the mystery. Like unfortunately, Lady Audley Secret. I was kind of I was getting bored. And was ready to be like done with that book, but this one, I just, I want to know what's what the deal is. Now I could easily look it up and stop, but this one I actually do want to physically finish. With that one, I cheated. With um, Lady Audley Secret, I actually cheated, and that's a shorter book. <laughs> that's a shorter book than this one. Um, but yeah, so that's where I am with that one. And I um I was kind of anxious. I was getting anxious towards because I do want to read. There's a lot of other books. I probably won't get to Dombey and Son. And maybe not even Withering Heights because I want to read books that I have read before I reread anything. Um. So my priority is the ones I haven't read, which is The Woman in White, The Framley Parsonage, and Dombey and Son. And then I would get to Withering Heights if I had time. So I probably won't be doing that. I mean, I can read that for the winter time. If I wanted to. Um, but, I mean, I still, it's only the 10th. So, I still got plenty of time. Um, so, but when I'm done with this one, I want to get to the Ramley Parsonage. Um, but the other thing is there's a lot of other books that I want to read that aren't Victorian. Like, The Book of Lost Things. And once the... Ones in Future Witches, I want to finally get back to that one. I brought that one with me when we went to go stay with my sister. And I read a little bit of that one. And so I want to get to that. So I, I want to read books that aren't just Victorian literature for this, for this month as well. That's what I always try to manage to do. And I don't always do well with that. Um, because I don't want to neglect Victober. I don't want this to be another readathon that I did once and then I don't come back to. You know, but I also want to read spooky books for October as well. And not just watch spooky stuff. Um, I did watch Hocus Pocus last night and The Covenant. Which, I like that. I mean, there are some that movie has flaws, yes, and it's not the best. But, for me, it's still fun. I like that one. It's fun. Um, and it's cool. Like, the whole Sons of Salem kind of, you know, that whole storyline I think is really cool. And like I said, I'm kind of going for a witchy theme. That's why I wanted to read The Once and Future Witches. Um, so now let's show what I got from Target. The, at least books wise. Um, I did, I did get my, the, you know, I did start the tradition of I did want to start the tradition of getting my nephews and niece a book because my mom was to put in my mom's the Halloween care package she sends them every year. Um, and she sends them one, I think I've told you guys this before, she sent, for every holiday she sends them a little care package with treats and stuff. And I like the idea of maybe sending them a book in e each time. But anyway, okay, so that's what I got. 
so first, okay, so this was a book that I did consider putting on my Kindle. Um, but then I saw it at Target and I was like, let me just go ahead and buy it, buy a physical copy. And it's not the hardback, it's paperback. So that helps too. And now my mom has the app. Um, so we get all the discounts and everything. Um, but this is a retelling of David Copperfield. But it's set in the Appalachian Mountains. Um, and this kid... He is born of a teenage mom, and she's sing a single mom. They live in a trailer. It's kind of about his trying to survive in the world, like his, you know, romantic relationships and um, foster care, child labor, dere like derelict schools, addiction. I'm like basically I'm looking at the back of the book. And, um, I have attempted to read one of her books before, the Poisonwood Bible. I did try to read it and I am not getting into it. I, I mean, maybe if I like this one, I'll give it another shot and buy it again. I like this cover. I like the orange or like the copper, <laughs> copper coloring of the words of the, the title and the author's name. See, like, this fits. This makes sense. This makes sense for the story. This doesn't. This doesn't tell me anything about the story. This at least tells you, you know, his this references his hair color and this represents his like bits and pieces of his life. Like he lives in the mountains in a trailer park. Um there's like, you know, football and you know, like these reference, you know, even without Read, having read the book, read the back description and a little bit I've heard of the, you know, I've heard what the book is about and read the back description. This fits it. This makes sense. Okay, so the only thing is this stupid sticker. Um, but yeah, nowadays covers make sense. But covers in the, when they put covers on older novels, of the, you know, that are labeled classics, the covers don't make any sense. It's just a random pretty cover. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to read I almost got this on Kindle, like I said, but I decided to, you know, buy it. I was at Target and, you know, the it didn't really, the other, none of the other books really caught my eye. Like I read the back description of some of them, but, um, but they just, none of them really, even the ones that had supernatural aspects, they didn't really interest me. And then the other book I bought was Christine by Stephen King. I wasn't sure about this one because, you know, I wasn't, I'm not sure if I would like, like, a story about a car, a haunted car. I wasn't sure how I would feel about it. Um... But, you know, I prefer this than uh, the, his, you know, but I'm more, obviously more willing to read this than his other, than his serial killer series. Um, and it's in, there weren't a lot of books, like Stephen King books. There was, like, I read The Shining and I have it. I've read it twice. And the same thing with Salem's Lot. I've read it twice and I have it. Um, and then I am, I don't know if I can ever read Cujo. Because it's about a dog getting rabies and becoming rabid. And I just, the idea of that, and, and you, at one point, like, you're inside the dog's head when he's all, like, and I don't think I can read that. As a dog lover, I, I don't know. It'd be too much. It might be too much for me. Um, so this was the only one that caught my attention. Um, and who knows? Maybe because, I mean, Stephen King, oh, and Pet, and they also have Pet Cemetery there, and I read that as well. And... Um, I ended up donating that one. I mean, I liked it, but it's not, like, my favorite. Um, it was still a good, it was a good one, though. And probably one of the more scary ones. Um, but... There's actually, um... I cannot remember which one. Which, which Stephen King. But there is a Stephen King that references a character getting in Christine the car oh oh I think it I think it was it I think it is it there is a character that gets into Christine 
the car, Christine, at one point. Um, but, yeah, so this is a haunted house, a haunted car story. I don't know a lot about what happens in the plot, except for the haunted car. Um, and I really like these covers. I saw them at the airport when we were in Boston, when we... We had to stop and we had to make a stopover in Boston before we went to London. And I saw these book these ones at the bookstore there. I think it was there. Yeah, because I didn't go to the bookstore in um in the DC area. I mean I mean not DC, I don't live in DC anymore. Um in the North Carolina the one in North Carolina. We didn't even go to the to the bookstore there. We just um we just got food and waited until we had to leave. Um, because you would have to go upstairs, and, you know, we didn't want to go all the way up there. Plus, you know, I was trying not to buy any books at the time. Um, especially because, you know, I wanted to buy books in London. But, yeah, I... So, yeah, I was in Boston where I saw these covers. And they are really cool. I like that they have that vintage-y 80s feel to them. Like, I thought that was really cool, the look of them. I don't know which ones of the, if all of his books, if only some of his books have these, some of his novels have these covers, but I would love to collect them because I think they're really cool. Um, but yeah, so we will see. But I mean, first I'm going to read the talisman and then I'll come, maybe I'll come to this one. I don't know. But anyway, um, so these are the two books I got from Target. I didn't, you know, for myself. Like I said, I bought a book for the kids. Um, it was a witchy book. It was a book about a witch. So I got, um, so yeah, I got them that, but I don't have that book. Um, but yeah, so that's how things are going right now. I'm going to read a little bit more of The Wind in White. And although I do have a video on pause, I'm probably going to watch the, the, finish the video I'm watching and then get to read The Woman in White. And so I'm going to do that. And then I got to finish. So, and I don't know if I'm going to finish. When I'm going to finish um, A Blind Fire. I don't know if I'm going to do it tonight. Because, or just. I'll just see how much more I have to read. Of that one. Or like. Because I have this weird thing where I don't like to read. I don't like to finish when I'm finish if I finish if I'm gonna finish a book, I don't want to finish it before I go to bed. Because then I have this, this feeling of adrenaline, this high, excitement of oh I just finished this exciting book and everything and, um. Then I'm kind of all wired and thinking about the book, you know. I mean not always, but a lot of times like if it's a book I've been with a while, a while and I'm reading for a while and I finally finished it then. I'm so anxious and excited at the same time and I don't want to do that right before I go to bed so sometimes I don't like to if I'm almost finished with a book I don't like to finish it I don't want to finish it while I'm getting ready to go to sleep because then I might get all excited and wired after I finish it and then have trouble going back to sleep so yeah. but anyway um so as far as so that's how my read is going. As always, I'd love to know what you are currently reading right now. Have you, um, is there anything spooky, any good spooky books that you're reading right now? Um, is there, is there any books that you're almost finished with? Um, have you read either of those books, Demon Copperhead or, um, Christine? I mean, if you don't like them, don't want to know. Because I want to, I don't want to be influenced, but, um... I'd be curious if you read them, and have you, or have you read Woman in White? I'd be curious your thoughts on that book, and um, because I'm personally enjoying it, I'm having fun with it, and it is a slow moving book. So if you never like, if you have not read any Victorian novels, they're very they are slow moving and a little more mellow, like I said, more dramatic than a lot of modern novels, um. But they can be very good and very really fun, you know, if you're okay with like I said, like a slower paced story. That sometimes is more. Um, and I don't know what I'm gonna read next. Maybe um, I do feel like I should probably read 
um, one of my Kindle books once I'm done with um, A Blend of Fire. I don't know if I'll read the second book, the sequel to Blend of Fire, or maybe I'll wait. But either way, I have it, thankfully. Because, you know, I want to try to read, like, most of the books I recently got on Kindle, get most of them read before I buy anything else on Kindle. Which, you know. Of course, at the same time, I'm very tempted to buy um, The Exorcist because it's definitely it went down a lot since I last looked at it. And like I said, I want to buy Shogun on Kindle because it's cheaper to do that than buy a physical copy of it. Um, and then with a physical copy, I have to buy part one and part two separate to, you know, for a less expensive purchase than getting the whole complete novel. Um, or I could just wait until Christmas. Wait for Christmas to get it. Um, wait, like, someone to get it for me. Or, so, it might be, but I might just get it on Kindle. We will see. But right now, I can't really. Like I said, I'm trying not to buy any more Kindle books. Even though I'm very tempted. Especially because, like I said, The Exorcist is a lot cheaper and um, than it was. And, you know, I feel like it would be perfect for this time of year, for October. But I guess that won't happen. So, maybe I'll buy it in November. Or, like, if I get some books on my Kindle Red and then you know I'll have it for next October not that oh, of course I can read books whenever these books whenever I want but I kind of like to save some of my horror books for you know spooky season and it is a classic but anyway um so if you guys like this video be sure to give a thumbs up click subscribe if you haven't and click the bell notification below if you want to be notified about my latest videos and I hope you are enjoying your reading, and I will talk to you all later. All right, bye!